Hi, Matt Wojcik and Mark Green here with the Greener Corporation. And we're here today to talk to you about solving seal problems on vertical baggers and horizontal flow wrappers. There's a lot of different causes for poor seals on packaging machinery. We can only, we have a short bit of time to, to, to cover these with you today. So there's, we're really only gonna hit the high spots and some things that we see uh, generally right off the bat. And, um, but ultimately if you guys encounter any additional seal problems other than what we cover here today, we encourage you guys to, uh, to get in touch with us directly. So some of the, the most common sealing issues uh, really start to center around um, package formation. So when we see pleats and wrinkles, uh, they'll lead to channel leakers. So that's where the, the, the symptom is, is right when we test our packages, we have a leak. And a lot of times they adjust at the cutting head and that's not where you want to be adjusting for a pleat or wrinkle. Right? We need to look further upstream at the at the forming tooling uh, or the, the the film on wine. You know, we want to present the jaws with a nice flat, even uh, package, right. not not something that has a crease, pleat, or, or wrinkle in it. Sure, and uh, I'll throw up some examples of that. So what you have here are, are examples of what we mean by pleats or wrinkles in the end seal. Um, and it's pretty clear what problem this causes is even more layers of film that have to be sealed over beyond the thin or lap seal. Um, generally, each layer, extra layer of film is an opportunity for a leak. So these problems aren't even caused by the sealing head them, themselves or the sealing jaws. They're essentially um, external uh, machine environment factors that, that cause these problems. Yes, and as I mentioned earlier, a lot of times uh, they're adjusted at the cutting head to try and make the uh, corrections, and they will then in turn introduce new problems. So uh, if you are adjusting at the cutting head, trying to uh, cut off a, a channel leaker, you're putting excessive pressure on your end seals, uh, and that can be problematic. Uh, another adjustment that people reach for very quickly is the heat. And right. the, the problem that we see, really, Matt, is these adjustments are readily available, they're easy to do, we don't even have to stop the machine, right. and people think, well, if a, a little bit of heat or a little more pressure uh, will solve the problem, uh, and then it doesn't, then think, well, a little bit more is what, what I need, and there seems to be no, no ceiling limit on that. The, uh, we end up getting packages that are really distorted and uh, we, we have a whole new series of problems to deal with. Right. So one of the things that Greater Corporation has done is to uh, begin offering jaws, and we've done this quite some time ago, out of a more highly thermally conductive material called duratherm. So duratherm um, essentially evens out the heat profile and also allows you to lower your set temperatures. Uh, and by heat profile, I have an image up here that shows kind of what I'm, what I'm referring to there. The top jaw is a thermal simulation done with a standard steel jaw. You can see the jaw is hot in the center and cool towards the ends. The problem that this causes is that in order to get a good seal and cut off leakers on the ends of the package, you have to turn the jaw temperature up higher, which in turn makes the center too hot and you'll get hot spots. Uh, and there's also issues associated with that. Um, the duratherm jaws, as you can see in the lower graphic, even out the heat profile from end to end within a few degrees. The other thing that duratherm does is allow you to lower your set temperatures. And the benefit of this 
is that when you have a line speed that ramps up and down, uh, you have to set the temperatures to, to run at the highest speeds. And when the line speeds are run lower, then you burn packages. But the lower your set temperature, the less likely it is that for that to happen. So uh, another, uh, you know, how do we combat some of these issues uh, of excessive pressure? Uh, we look and look into uh, engineering the problem out, right? Uh, through the, the ceiling jaws uh, with uh, maybe a thin seal relief to eliminate that excess uh, pressure. Uh, but what is a more effective uh, tool is uh, a flexible ceiling face. Sure, sure. And I think I'm going to I'm gonna start by showing y'all a, uh, a package that, that's run with excessive pressure or a couple different ones. Uh, up in the upper left-hand corner, you see the yellow package that's split slightly at the end um, and down in the center you see a uh, silver package with a uh, it's crushed in the center so i'm going to switch this graphic over to uh, one of the products that we offer that helps solve that crushing in the center um, that would be our flexible easy seal jaws these jaws are available for heat and cold seal and what they do is they're designed to have the center of the jaw flex to accommodate for the additional layers of film uh, caused by the fin seal. And the advantage of having a system like this over a jaw with a relief is a jaw with a relief is ground specifically for that exact package. There's always variables when a package is formed. Uh, if, the, if it's not set up right, the package isn't wrapped tight enough, the fin varies in size. Um, that's not an issue with the easy seal with the flexible jaws because they will just naturally conform to any size package or thickness film or, or fit. It's been a very effective tool because if we don't have that excessive pressure to begin with and the flex seal is also made out of the duratherm right sure so you're going to get a, a more thermally conductive so you're it's, it's really addressing two issues if we can stop the adjustments that we talked about earlier from being made in the first place by giving you tooling that opens up your operating window that's a good way of engineering a problem out a absolutely so it's important to look at not only the tooling to, to do that, but how we also identify those problems before they exist and also diagnose them when we do see problems with the seals. Yeah, because a lot of times these adjustments are being made uh, based on what the package is saying. Right. But the adjustment's not always correct. So we want to check and verify the condition, the operating condition, uh, our machine environment. So uh, one of the tools that we use to do that is carbon and carbonless paper. I'm going to put a graphic up here. Even a lay person can look at this and see uh, that this is the pressure that the film structure is seeing. And these are all images that were taken uh, at, at factories. These, these were jaws that were running. Product. So uh, on the upper right hand corner, we can see that the jaws are not parallel at all. So the film, the package is not getting even pressure. It's getting excessive pressure on the left hand side and not enough pressure on the right hand side. And that, that would manifest itself in the way that was shown in one of the packages earlier where it was cut. Yes. And then we have um, below that a, a set of tooling that is clearly damaged and you're not going to get uh, optimum seals, obviously, with damaged tooling, uh, or to the left of that, with tooling that's worn excessively. And the thing with the, the worn tooling is that sealing jaw that that impression was taken on uh, probably appeared to look fine. You, you can't see that kind of wear. Yeah, you can't see that on, um, certainly can't see it on the package, and it's hard to see on the jaw, but you can certainly tell that when it's, uh, when you take a carbon impression. Yeah, so it, it's a very effective tool and a cost-effective tool to diagnosing uh, your, your 
your ceiling issues. So at Greener, we're not just looking at your ceiling jobs, right? We're looking at everything that goes into making a good seal. We've put together a, a matrix that we think can uh, has the five factors involved with, with making you an optimum seal and having your parts perform uh, to their fullest extent. And we've covered this a little bit earlier in one of our other presentations, but I'm going to put this up again. So five factors being design, which we've talked about in, in both uh, easy seal, the flexible sealing jaws. Um, we've talked a bit about uh, manufacturing accuracy. Um, haven't talked about availability now, but uh, part setup really comes into play when it, in, in affecting seal quality. And we've also talked about machine environment, where we've talked about wrinkles and folds in, in the seal. And on that, even a, a little bit more, uh, you know, we've seen examples where the product is actually inducing problems. Sure. So uh, if you've got problems in the kitchen, uh, you can have problems in packaging. Right. And what you need to do is be able to diagnose where your problems are generated from before you make those corrective adjustments. Absolutely. So... The thing that we think brings this all together, we only have a few minutes left, so I'll just go into it briefly, is, is the education part of, uh, of this. In, in solving ceiling problems, the best way um, for, for problems to be solved is to have people on your staff that are uh, equipped with the knowledge they need to be able to take care of these issues. And one of the ways that we do that um, obviously with with on-site training which mark does quite a quite a bit of um, but another way is our p3 solutions blog which I'm going to put a put the address up real quick to show you and mark can tell you a little bit more about that yeah we've actually compiled an extensive uh, library of resources for you and we've had many customers uh, who have gone on and kind of sorted through and looked uh, and saying, I, I have uh, this problem or that problem, and have come away much more educated and self-sufficient uh, from this uh, blog post. Uh, I've had mechanics tell me that uh, I, I watched your videos before I did the jaw installation, and they found that there were helpful hints in there that uh, helped them make uh, corrective uh, adjustments to the, the wrapper during the installation that made the installation more successful. So I, I encourage you guys to, to go and take a look at the resources that are available on there. And I also encourage you to pass this on or to your maintenance mechanics and your line operators because it's a resource for them to look at and uh, gain the knowledge that will be helpful to them on a daily basis in their jobs. All right. Uh, I think that about wraps it up for now. And, and like we, I mentioned earlier at the start, this is, we've only scratched the surface on, on problems. We could probably sit here and talk for hours on the subject. Um, so the specific problems that you had might not have been, even been touched by what we spoke about today, but I encourage you to give us a shout and we'll, uh, we would be happy to help you out. Yes, we would welcome the opportunity to work with you.